I don't know what the record for the most people on one of our timeout appearances. Uh, it's probably five or six people. We've got about 31 uh, people inside the studio right now. And we're all, picture us all jammed together. Uh, and here I am uh, trying to hold on to the microphone in, in the face of all of these people. We are filled with bowlers today as we talk about Hillsdale High School bowling. Randy Preston and Stan Hutchison. Randy, I ran into you uh, down at the Camden Frontier Reverse Drawing. Now, I knew Randy in another life. Uh, when he was down in Frontier, and I had his kids in school. And uh, Randy, come on up to the mic, too, there. I saw you at the reverse drawing, and uh, you wanted to come in and talk about your bowling team. I had no idea, no idea that you were coaching bowling. How'd you get into that? Well, they needed somebody, and uh, Stan and I, we stepped up and said, well, let's do this. We wanted them to continue the bowling season here at Hillsdale. And so was there some question about whether they'd be able to continue having bowling at Hillsdale? Was that up for debate? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, uh, we didn't have any coaches, and uh, there's kind of some controversy on funding and this and that. Right. So uh, all these kids teamed together, asked Stan and I to be coaches, and they went out and worked hard and got the community to come together and local businesses, and uh, we made this thing happen. Okay, when is the season? Are you still going, uh, and how is it going? It's going uh, going pretty well. Uh, the season, we have regionals this weekend up to Airport Lanes in Jackson, starting Friday and Saturday. And uh, this year, our girls have done quite well. They have a record of five and three. Our boys, uh, we're we're one and seven, but our record nowhere near reflects how well they have done. I mean, it's been really close. We've lost a lot of close matches, but we have a young team. Can you? Can, can I don't know much about high school bowling, so can you guys take me back? Maybe you want one of your kids to do it, or one of you coaches. How do you win a game? Is it a game? Is it a match? How is that determined? How how do you win a well, game? Well, I'm going to senior bowler Clayton step up here and uh, explain the format to you. <laughs> All right. Um, well, first you bowl two bakers where um, one bowler bowls one frame, one bowler bowls a second frame, one bowler bowls a third frame, fourth frame um, for the fourth bowler, and then the fifth bowler bowls a fifth frame. And then uh, those five bowls, um, the first bowler again bowls a sixth frame, and the second bowls a seventh, and then uh, the fifth bowler, your anchor, bowls a... Uh, the tenth frame to, to try and get your team the victory, and then after you bowl a second uh, two of those, you then bowl two um, individual games where five uh, bowlers, um, usually the same five for the bakers, bowl an individual game themselves, and then you get a point for those. Um, and the point system for bowling uh, is quite confusing, <laughs> but <laughs> it's like it's two for totals and one for individuals, and so we won't get into that, but. It's it's you'll have to come out and watch some time. It's a, all right, Clayton. Game. I would imagine you're one of the bakers. Yep. So how many frames do you end up bowling before the night's over? Um, let's see, technically I bowl twenty four. Are you kidding me? Nope. Twenty four <laughs> frames. Frames. Yep. And a frame is um one uh, one attempt at the and then a spare if you yeah, have to. Yeah, and then a spare if you have to. Okay. Yeah. All right. So when you when you do your 24 frames, that's basically, for me, I would normally do 10 frames and that'd be one game. Yep. So it's a couple of games, basically, yeah. Yeah. essentially. And at the end of the day, you look up at the, the scores and you kind of see where yeah. you are. Now, now, Coach Randy said that you've had some really close games. or Do you call it a game or a match? A match. match. You've had some close matches uh, during the course of the year. Tell us about the match that you won. Let's talk about Let's focus on the positive. Which, who did you beat? And tell me about that. Um. <laughs> well, we beat the Western Panthers, um, I think it was last Tuesday. Um, we kind of went in thinking, all right, we're going 0-6 um, at this point in time. Uh, let's just go and try and finish off the season strong. And um, we went in, I think we took one baker. Um, so we were going in 4-6, uh, to six, and then our guys just really just pulled it together, and the individuals kind of just had their high, I know. Um, 7 out of 10 match games. Yeah. Uh, one seven out of ten. I know one of our guys had one of his season bests um, in that game, and just we did, we just really just brought it together as a team and just pulled good games and got it. And then it was party time. Party time. You know, you won. You got a d triple fist pump and uh, all of that kind of thing. Well, Coach said yeah. he buy him pizza if they won, so you know how that goes. You asked for it, pal. I you mean, you <laughs> you were probably happy to buy it too, we weren't did you? Did it last night. Absolutely. Uh, Randy Preston is the head uh, boys coach. Uh, Stan, come on up to – I think we want to use mic three. I'm not sure two is working. Uh, Stan Hutchison is the girls' coach. And uh, 
actually, we're going to have to go to Mike, too. I'm sorry. My mistake. Uh, Stan Hutchison is the girls' coach. And, uh, Stan, you guys, 5-3 and three on the year, uh, having a really successful season. Well, yeah, two weeks ago we were tied for first place, and we bowled Western, and we had them down going into the last game. We had 12 points. We only needed 15 to win the match. We came out tied, 15-15, and uh-huh. lost the roll-off. So that put us down to second place. And all week since then, all the girls have talked about is regionals, regionals, regionals. I kept telling them we got to win the next match to finish second. Well, we lost it. It was close, but we lost it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if it was a letdown from dropping from first to second or if it was the regionals or what, but they just they gave it a good try. They bowled good. I'm really proud of them. They had a successful year. For sure. I mean, you, Nobody you know, expected you, us to really do anything because we had two returning we had three bowlers that never bowled before, Tori being one that came a long way. Well, you talked about it as you came on the air. I mean, the whole season was in doubt, and then to have a winning yeah. season, that's pretty special in well, light of all of that. It, not me. Right, right on. How do you be a bowling coach? I mean, do you, do you have practices, and what do you work on? Is there, Are there fundamentals or drills yeah. that you do, <clears> or do <throat> you just roll games? you got to work on their approach, getting to the line in time with timing, it's hand-to-hide coordination, and then they got spots they got to hit, mm-hmm. and then they got to adjust for spares, which I had a tremendous bunch of girls to work with. They mm-hmm. were all worked good together, and they all listened and learned. And they didn't have to do any push-ups because I fear if they, as long as they tried and kept learning – they were they were accomplishing something mm-hmm. when they didn't if they goofed off or anything they would have had to do push-ups. I think now, if the you boys tried, did push-ups all year. Of course they did. I think <laughs> I think if you try to do push-ups with bowling shoes on, you'd wipe out. Well, they could take them off because they they're super slippery and it might be hard to grip the <laughs> you know with your feet. Got to get up on your toes yeah. and you're going to be fine. Trust me, there's some boys out here can show you how to do them. With bowling shoe push-ups, I'd like to see that five and three for the girls. Uh, the guys uh, finished very strong as well. Uh, Randy Preston and Stan Hutchison. Uh, would one of you mind uh, introducing all the guys and girls that you brought with you? Go ahead, you got more. No problem. I got freshman Austin McMillan. I also have freshman Tori Stevens. I have a sophomore, Darian Allwart. I have a junior, Tyler Ritchie. I have a senior, Clayton Kerner. I have another senior, Emily Green. I have another senior, senior Casey Allen. <laughs> And it, it, are there more people that weren't able to make it, or is yes, this the uh, whole? In total, we had five five boys on the boys' squad, and we had seven girls on the girls' squad. Awesome. Right. And right. does everybody get to play? No, we had eight, eight boys. I'm sorry, I said five. We had eight. I mean, does everybody get to play every game, or do you have to, like, Substitute. sort of pick and choose who gets to roll in a particular game? You can only bowl five bowlers at a time, whether it be Baker format or in match play. And then you can take and uh, sub them in and out. And you can't sub them back in in the same game. Right. But you can sub in if somebody's not, you know, bowling very well. Or even in a case where you might get down to the last ball and say somebody leaves a 10 pin. Well, you know that they don't pick 10 pins up very well. So you can take a bowler that's not bowling. Maybe they can pick up a 10 pin. So you can put them in to make that and and try to win a match. Uh, Fatigue on the elbow. uh, I mean, is there certain safety gear that you wear as far as braces? Or do these kids just let it rip? Uh, most of them just let it rip. And i tell you what, the, the motion with throwing a bowling ball is kind of similar to like a softball pitcher. Mm-hmm. A softball pitcher can go out there and throw multiple games. You right. don't have any limitations. And the same way with throwing a bowling ball. The biggest thing there probably you have to worry about is maybe a little bit of fatigue in your fingers and so forth. Where's your home uh, rink or home alley, so to speak? Uh, Hillside Lanes. Hillside, my friends. You know it. Steve Amison and the gang over at Hillside yeah. Lanes. And they've been very supportive to the bowling team and uh, – it's, it's been, a, been a great time this I'll year. tell you, that Lane 17, they're not a sponsor of this show, but I'm going to plug them for a second anyway. Um, I've had a chance to do some stuff over there and get to know those guys, and that's a great local business over there. I mean, the investment that they made in that property, you go into that restaurant, the Lane 17, it is spectacular. I mean, it is a first-rate sports bar and grill restaurant type thing. You can watch all the games in there, and then the bowling is perfect. I mean, it's just a great setup over there, and uh, I, I – I got to get them as a sponsor on the timeout show. That's all there is to it because I want to talk about them every week, and and we love those guys over there. Uh, Randy Preston, Stan Hutchison, and the rest of the gang. Let's get one of the ladies up here on the microphone. You pick, Coach. All right, Miss. All right. She works Um, in Lane Seventeen, by the way. You work in Lane Seventeen. Yep, I help cook. So you smoke all of these guys in bowling, right? Yeah, pretty much. No. (laughs) Is is there a uh, such a thing as the girls just because basically there's no? It's exactly the same. Like in golf, the girls. You know, get a little bit closer tee shot and the rest of it. For bowling, it's exactly the same. There are no differences. 
and there are some spectacular female bowlers around. Do the girls generally beat the guys, or does it is it pretty close? How does that work out? Um, it depends on our days. You know, we have days where we can really kick some butt, and then other days where our minds are all about boys or something else that's happening at school, so we don't do as well. Um, but if we're focused, we can definitely beat the boys. Maybe not Clayton Kerner, but we can beat the other boys, maybe some of them. Right. So generally the boys roll a little bit higher score than the girls, or is that not the case? No. Uh, not all the time, no. It's pretty much even. Yeah. And are you able to put the ball up there with the, I mean, do you use a special kind of spinning motion? Are you trying to get some English on it, or is it a straight throw? I mean, what's your approach as far as that goes? Um, No, I definitely put spin on it. Sometimes I take it really far out, and you start, like, you know, butting your fingernails, hoping it comes back in for a strike or something. But, no, I don't do a straight ball. Does anybody do a straight ball? Uh, Tori's, Tori's pretty much, she's got a little hook on it. Get up there and tell her you throw it. Come on, Tori. <laughs> this is her first year. She she went up to the line, didn't have no approach or nothing. Just started out rolling. Just chucked it, yeah. chuck and duck. Now yeah. She's got approach yeah. and everything. Tori, how do you roll it now? Well, I try to keep my hand a bit straight, and then I spin it around at the last second to get the spin in. But now, Randy, I'm thinking the torquing of the no, spinning. It's like shaking hands. Doesn't that yeah. hurt no. after a while? No. no, you get a ball fitted fitted right for your hand. Right. You make a motion. It's just like coming through and reaching up and shaking hands with somebody. Mm -hmm. It's just a nice fluid motion. Unless you do it wrong, then it can hurt. So when you see people bowl that don't know what they're doing, do you just shake your head? Or, I mean, do you, do you go and tell them, hey, listen, I mean, you're just, like, if you were to watch me bowl, you'd have to say, look, I mean, th th that is wrong. You're doing it wrong. You're going to kill yourself. Or do you just, you know, do you, do you just kind of let it lie? I mean, what do you do in that situation? I guess I kind of giggle a little bit, but then I remember <laughs> that that was me a couple of months ago, so I try not to say anything. I mean, it, Tori, right? Yes. So you weren't planning, I guess, on bowling, and then you kind of got into it late. And now that you've you've done it, obviously you've had a good time with it. Mm -hmm. um, Very good time. It's different. I would think it's a little bit different from the other high school sports. Like you don't have cheerleading, uh, you don't have cheerleaders at your uh, get matches. <laughs> no. you probably don't have a pep assembly. Maybe you're kind of under the radar a little bit. Uh, is that okay, or would you like a little more recognition at the school? You know, of course I'd want like people to recognize the hard work that we put in, but I feel like they do support our bowling team mm -hmm. a little bit, but. It's nice, you know, a lot of parents come out, and there are people out there to watch our matches. So how does that work from a spectator standpoint? Are there any bleachers at a bowling alley, are there? I mean, how do, they, how do people watch you? Just the table sitting around just at the bowling alley. So mom and dad can come watch it, mm -hmm. you know. But if you had, a, like, a state meet, I would imagine there would have to be some kind of a bleacher set up. At the regional, there's $5 uh, entrance. Admission. Well, the MHSA doesn't let you come into anything for free. Well, our matches are free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our matches are free. The local matches are free. Yeah. That's the only thing. The but last, our last match, there wasn't even room in the parking lot for the bowling league that was coming in after us. Those no, guys are like, okay, come were, on, guys, wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, but they were watching. They were you're not listening. allowed. You're not allowed to smoke and drink uh, while allowed. you bowl at high school level. Uh, let's just throw. <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of people have a misconception about bowling. Uh, they think it's a recreational league deal. Everybody, you know, drinks a pitcher of beer and smokes a pack of cigarettes. First of all, you can't smoke at all at Hillside Lanes anymore, thankfully. That's great. Yes. And, and secondly, uh, you guys are student athletes. I mean, I know you take it seriously. You're not out there clowning around. and it, You like to bowl, just like somebody might like playing baseball or like playing football. But there are certain rules that you have to abide by and, and certain ways to get good at it, I would imagine. And, and you have to train within those rules. Let's get one of the other guys up. Randy, your choice. Uh, we talked to Clayton. Come on, big yeah. guy. Tyler, what grade are you in? I'm in the 11th grade. Okay, uh, tell me about your role on the team this year. What did you? Uh, how did you get involved, and what was your role? Uh, like I started for the um, Saturday League over at Hillside Lanes mm -hmm. when I was little. Um, it, it, it was just a really cool thing to do. Like, like I just got so good at it, and last year. Uh, I was surprised to be called as the last guy to make it onto the 2010-2011 team. Um, we we, just, we we finished 10 and 0, and it was a really great year for us. This year, you know, I think we can did better, but I think everyone did their job, and I think mm -hmm. we did really great effort. I gotta tell you, um, 
That Detroit Tigers necklace that you have on, I would like to own that. <laughs> that is very cool. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, when you're walking out and you walk by my friend Rick, who has the tiger hat on, you want to make sure you guard that thing because uh, he's coming after that if he sees it. <laughs> sure. he, he's a it. huge fan. I, I get the feeling, Randy, from your kids and, and from Stan's kids as well, that this has just been a positive experience for everybody. It, it seems like everybody's had fun. Even when the guys weren't winning, they stayed together and kept working at it. And at the end of the day, that's really all you can ask for, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. These kids show great school, you know, enthusiasm, team spirit. I mean, uh, they never got down. They cheered everybody on. And uh, it's been, been a very positive learning experience for both Stan and myself. So the girls are completely finished. Uh, no, regionals. we have regionals. You both get to do regionals. We both to do regionals. Thank you for correcting me. And are they both this weekend? Yes, sir. Same place? Same place. And you're <laughs> rolling in Jackson on both teams? Yep. yep. Same time? Yep. Yeah, we start at 1 o'clock Friday and 1 o'clock Saturday. And that's airport lanes? Airport lanes. Airport lanes in Jackson, 1 o'clock Friday? Yes, sir. So they all get out of school a little bit early on Friday? Yeah, just a little bit. We have to sign in at 11 o'clock, so I'm, I'm getting them out bright and early. You guys get out of school Friday to bowl? Yep. yep. Take like that, the, everybody who's not on the bowling team. Exactly. So <laughs> make I mean, come out and well, bowl uh, next year. Uh, you got to get more guys year. on this team. What's that? They could try out next year. Hey, they're they're all they're all going to. We're gonna lose two seniors. Friday at at ten o'clock or eleven o'clock, they're all gonna be like, "You guys are going to bowl right now." Yep. I'm signing up for that next year. There you go. It's gonna plus, sounds like plus, fun. Uh, other meets, we've got them out of class at about you know one thirty in the afternoon, so we can travel to meets and so forth. This now, is sounding better all the time. Now we're not sure how it's gonna work next year because we are changing leagues. Right. So we're going to the Lenway Conference. Right. No idea so I'm not real sure what teams we're going to be up against. Or who bowl, Who even has I a bowling know, team. I know Columbia Central is following us into this league. So there's somebody so, you can play. So that's somebody that we are familiar with. I want to thank you guys for coming in, uh, Randy and Stan, and all of the kids uh, who came in today. The regionals are Friday starting at 1 o'clock up in Jackson at Airport Lanes, and then you bowl again on Saturday, correct? Yes, sir.